Hello, good evening. Welcome to this special program, the first CDE program of 2022 by Indian Dental Association Malapuram branch. Today we have a lecture, special lecture on tooth whitening by Dr. Surabhi Mahidhar. This CDE program is brought to you by ICPA Health Products Limited. Now let us start with the proceedings. I welcome Dr. Amit Unni, President, IDM Malapuram, Dr. Rajesh Gangadharan, Secretary, IDA Malapuram, and Dr. Nishad Pari, CDE Convener, IDA Malapuram. Yes, Dr. Amit. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Respected Speaker, Dr. Surabhi Mahidar, Secretary Mida, uh, Dr. Rajesh, and CDE Convener, Dr. Nishad, uh, ICPA, and Dr. Rajiv, uh, uh, clinical head of ICPA, my members of IDA Malapuram, members of the uh, branches of Kerala state, and other members from the various states and from GCC countries. A very warm good evening to you all. In this challenging and com uh, competitive world, our dental professionals needs to be updated on technology, materials and procedures. In pursuit, I officially inaugurate the webinar. Materials. I declare, uh, I declare the webinar open and have a happy learning. Thank you. <coughs> Over to Dr. Rajesh. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Amit. VIDA Malapuram, in welcome and invite all the participants who have come here to attend the webinar on the topic tooth whitening. We have got uh, 200 plus registration all over from all over Kerala, outside Kerala, even outside uh, India also. PI IDA Malapuram appreciates that. Your overwhelming response gives us the encouragement to conduct more programs like this. We expect the same participation and support from all for our upcoming program also. Through our Google form, we have got so many questions and doubts beforehand to ask to the speaker. The participant can also use the comment section in Facebook and YouTube in case if you want to ask some doubts during or after the webinar. The program marks the, our association with ICPA. We acknowledge that and looking forward for more program with the collaboration. Now it's time to invite our speaker, Dr. Surabhi Mahida to our program. With pleasure, we IDM Malapuram invite Dr. Surabhi Mahida. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Before, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Before starting the lecture, let me give a brief introduction about our speaker. Dr. Surabhi Mahida is a renowned and well-known name in the area of aesthetic dentistry, FMR, and implants. He did his MDS in prosthodontics from JSS Dental College in 2008. He is having his private practice at Madana Palle, Andhra Pradesh. Dr. Surabhi is the founder of the SM series of prosthodontics and SM dental study groups, which conducts lectures, webinars, and hands-on program on FPD procedures, full mouth rehabilitation, and dental implants. It's our privilege to have you here, sir. This is the beginning of our association with Dr. Surabhi Mahida. We are, we are in plans to conduct a direct CD program on the topic FMR, full mouth rehabilitation, with the very famous Dr. Surabhi Mahidar on board. Now, the screen is all yours, sir. Dear colleagues, Dr. Surabhi Mahidar for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, IDA Malapuram. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajiv. Uh, and th thank you so much, ICPA. All the collaboration for good thing. Uh, let's have a great uh, learning session on teeth whitening see when before i start with the session as such uh, when it comes to teeth whitening let me clarify one thing that teeth whitening is not all about bleaching see what whatever we understand uh, when it comes to the clinical dentistry is teeth whitening is bleaching so teeth whitening is a very broad category of uh, a subject which we need to understand before we proceed into the clinical dentistry so the first myth when it comes to the teeth whitening is teeth whitening is not all about bleaching. It contains various subcategories which we need to understand and probably uh, select the case accordingly. So whoever comes to us with the intention of getting 
uh, teeth whitening done, let's not jump onto the bleaching directly. Let's diagnose the case. Let's select the case. Let's rule out what has to be done. And then probably we'll jump on to whatever has to be done when it comes to the category of teeth whitening. So today I'm going to take you all through the facts as well as myths when it, when it is uh, concerned about the topic, which is known as your teeth whitening. Myself, Dr. Surabhi Mahidar, I am a prosthodontist and implantologist uh, who, has, who has been practicing for the past 13 years uh, and, and has been mentoring over uh, full mouth rehabs, occlusion, uh, implant prosthodontics and fixed prosthodontics. I welcome you all to this session, which goes on for 40 to 45 minutes. Teeth whitening is a very, very big subject. So I have tried to condense everything, all the aspects of tooth, uh, teeth whitening into uh, probably a 40 to 45 uh, uh, minute lecture so that you understand the basics of how it has to be done and uh, the differences between the different aspects of teeth whitening. What is basically tooth whitening? So when it comes to tooth whitening, we need to understand that it starts with brushing. So it is not something which is related to what patient sits on the dental chair and what we do on the teeth. So we need to probably educate first that the patient has to brush so many number of times. We need to educate first that the patient has to use such and such uh, toothpaste. We need to educate before, before sleeping what the patient has to do after brushing the teeth. So all these things also, uh, you know, subconsciously falls in the category of uh, tooth whitening. So let's let's understand that it starts with brushing okay everyone knows about tooth brushing everyone knows about how many times tooth brushing has to be done all that so i will not go in detail when it comes to the brushing techniques and the brushing what is next once the tooth brushing is done patient goes through probably a number of days where a lot of stains a lot of plaque a lot of calculus everything gets deposited on teeth even though patient brushes probably two to three times a day there would be some kind of micro deposits which are uh, getting accumulated because of so many factors. And what we have to do as dentists is known as oral prophylaxis. So the next thing that falls into the category of tooth, tooth whitening after brushing is your oral prophylaxis, which we generally call it as scaling and polishing. So when it comes to tooth whitening, what we are going to do in tooth whitening is we are going to remove the external stains as well as the internal stains in simple terminology or in simple words to put forward. The external stains are the stains which are getting accumulated on the teeth over a period of time. Let it be food, let it be drinks, let it be any kind of metal deposits, let it be any kind of bacteria that is accumulating over the tooth and probably leaving certain kinds of stains over the tooth. So the first thing what we need to do is oral prophylaxis or the scaling and polishing and then probably recalling the patient once in six months to see the maintenance. Let's say that the scaling and polishing is done, but still the patient wants to change the shade of the tooth. Scaling and polishing will take care of the external stains. All the plaque, all the debris, all the calculus, whatever deposits are there is cleaned. And after that, if patient wants to recover the lost shade or probably improve the present shade, there are two aspects. Then we need to consider what is known as bleaching. So the third category of tooth whitening is bleaching. So let's not mistake tooth whitening as bleaching. We need to probably start with the basic thing go on to the mediocre thing and then probably go on to the complicated thing of tooth whitening, which is the bleaching. And in bleaching also, we have many things to consider. What are the advantages of bleaching? What are the disadvantages of bleaching? Which case has to be selected for bleaching? Which case has to be rejected for bleaching? So all that we'll see, we'll see in probably a simple understanding and then proceed. Now, when it comes to tooth whitening, Basically, we are going to change the color of the tooth or the shade of the tooth. Let it be scaling. We're making white. We are, we, are, we are removing all those darker deposits which are present on the teeth and probably we are making it whiter. When it comes to bleaching, we are going a step ahead. What are we going? We apply an agent which is known as a bleaching agent, which is usually a, a combination of uh, a peroxide. So what is a peroxide? When there is a peroxide and we disintegrate it, probably, 
it leaves the free radicals on the tooth. And what are the free radicals? The free radicals are the, the nascent oxygent and the, the peroxide radicals, which are there from the bleaching agent. So once these radicals, free radicals come onto the tooth, the organic pigmentation in the tooth, which is present, it gets oxidized and the shade or the color is lightened. So once the shade or color is lightened, it improves in the shape, as simple as that. So if someone wants to improve the shade of the tooth, then we take the category of tooth bleaching, where we apply a bleaching agent, where we stimulate the bleaching agent, we activate the catalyst in it, and then probably it oxidizes the organic pigments that are present in the tooth, and then we achieve the lighter shade of the tooth. When it comes to the past, where there were no materials that were developed, People used to, even dentists used to use honey, a combination of honey and lemon. They used to scrub on the teeth to get a shade. They used to combine lemon, honey and salt as well to scrub on the tooth with vinegar, nitric acid. So all these things were used in the past. But what was the main disadvantage? Why did not these things come as a formulation when it came to the present scenario? These things were good enough. But after they used all these things, the tooth used to get abraded. There used to be a wear of the tooth. There used to be excessive post-operative hypersensitivity that used to exist on the tooth. So all these materials were ruled out. And they came up with a softer versions of these materials where they could oxidize as well as get a decent result with minimal post-operative sensitivity. So what are the types of discolorations that we discussed just now? Extrinsic discolorations, which are uh, various kinds of discolorations. We'll see what are those discolorations. Intrinsic, we'll see what are those. And staining. Staining is basically if you have some cracks, if you have some fracture lines, you know, whatever food, whatever drinks we take in inside the oral cavity, they go and form stains. So all these things come into discolorations. When it comes to intrinsic discolorations that are present inside, inside the tooth, inside the enamel. So it could be amelogenesis imperfecta or dentinogenesis imperfecta. These are uh, classic examples of discolorations that we see in day-to-day -day dentistry when it comes to enamel and dentine. You could see pulpal necrosis where trauma of the teeth is very common. Dentine hypocalcification stains are also visible when the enamel is quite translucent. Pulp tissue remnants, I'm not talking about necrosis, the remnants of pulp tissue, when we do root canals, the remnants are left out in the uh, canals. So that pulp tissue remnants also cause discoloration of the teeth. When it comes to intracanal medicaments like calcium hydroxide, yes, they also cause discolorations of the teeth and the, the gutta paka and the obturation materials that we select and we use. They also cause the internal or the intrinsic discoloration of the tooth. And finally, the restorations we use. Suppose we're using silver amalgam. The, the, uh, the discoloration that we see over a tooth with silver amalgam is quite different when we see the discoloration when it comes to either composite or glass enamel restoration. We also use a lot of posts. Metallic posts used to be the, the common scenario, though it has been replaced with fiber posts these days. But yes, whenever we used to use the metallic post, we used to have these intrinsic discolorations. So in these, if I see it as a broader category, which intrinsic discoloration can I take for bleaching? Which, which intrinsic discoloration can I take for probably an oral prophylaxis or something else apart from bleaching? So if I see all these things, probably a pulpum necrosis, I probably... Uh, uh, a bleach uh, discoloration which is achieved by intracanal medicaments and obturation materials could be treated to a certain extent with bleaching. The rest of all the, the categories which are mentioned here are not falling into the category of bleaching. They fall into the category of restoration. So the final method or the final technique which we use in cosmetic dentistry after brushing, after oral prophylaxis and after bleaching is your restoration. So now we need to categorize. We need to place the case in one of these categories and then select. So if a patient comes to you with probably an AI or a DI, 
amelogenesis imperfecta or dentinogenesis imperfecta without actually seeing or visualizing or analyzing the enamel we just can't jump onto bleach because it will not give you a result it will actually uh, give a result which is very bad when it comes to the tooth the patient might have hypersensitivity the patient might have quite a lot of pain post the procedure without any result so we need to probably select the case according to the category or the indication as well can i use bleaching over tetracycline stains yes mild tetracycline stains can be uh, you know treated with the bleaching procedures definitely start with the oral prophylaxis and then go on to bleaching there are excessive tetracycline stains also which fall into the category 3 that is quite doubtful in case we cannot treat it with bleaching then we have to jump on to the restoration part when it comes to fluorosis especially the fluorosis stains are divided into categories again suppose i get a case of mild fluorosis i can still treat with the combination of probably two bleaching techniques which i would be discussing later but when i get probably a moderate to questionable or pitted fluorosis which is involving the enamel where you have a lot of pits in the enamel then i would not take the call of bleaching the teeth i would probably go with a restoration i either select a full coverage restoration if dentin is exposed if i don't have quite the amount of enamel for partial coverage restorations or i i would select the partial coverage restoration either direct or indirect if i see that at least 60 to 70 percent of peripheral enamel is intact so that's how we select the cases according to the the enamel availability as well as whether we have pitting or no pitting when it comes to aging definitely yes we can improve the shape to a certain extent with the combination of oral prophylaxis and uh, bleaching procedures if the aging stains or the shade is also uh, having wear tooth wear then we would proceed with the restoration not only the bleaching procedure because it would become an excessive unnecessary step if i'm going to change the shade of the tooth which is having a wear tooth wear with a restoration we can directly go ahead with the restoration rather than bleaching and then going for restoration it becomes an unnecessary step so when it comes to extrinsic stains definitely all these stains would be treated with a combination of oral prophylaxis and bleaching yes plaque or apply uh, acquired pellicle can be treated can be removed easily with oral prophylaxis itself metallic stains can be removed to certain extent with oral prophylaxis and certain extent to uh, with the bleaching procedures all metallic stains cannot be removed with bleaching tobacco stains yes we can the tea coffee all beverage stains we can chlorhexidine stains yes stains with antibiotics yes chromogenic bacteria this this is a very very common condition which we see in day-to-day -day industry if you see those just black stains you know the darker the the greener to the blacker strains which we see on the teeth are chromogenic bacteria so what we do for chromogenic bacteria is thorough oral prophylaxis probably Im improve the shade by one by bleaching and then recall the patient every three to four months to check if the stains are reappearing there's a very common problem where we keep seeing these stains uh, at probably two to three months interval of time so we need to probably assess chromogenic bacteria carefully and then uh, very closely these are the three teeth bleaching materials that are developed from all this honey salt vinegar and all those things because they were very harsh on teeth now when it comes to the hydrogen peroxide this is the most common uh, bleaching material which we use in in office teeth bleaching technique what is in office teeth bleaching technique we'll we'll see what it is when it comes to the carbamate peroxide usually we insert inside the tooth let's say uh, there is a root canal treated tooth which has become blacker which has become darker then we treat that tooth initially with a technique which is known as internal bleaching we insert carbamide peroxide or a combination of hydrogen peroxide and carbamide peroxide which is the modified technique and then improve the shape of the tooth then go for a restoration either direct or indirect according to the indication sodium perborate is usually used in the uh, home bleaching techniques when we send the patient probably away from the uh, dental clinic and the patient wants to use the bleaching 
uh, trace with the material, sodium perborate is slightly lesser in concentration. It is not that harsh. So we can give the patients to use it. The patient can dispense in the tray and use the sodium perborate bleaching material when the patient is awake probably three to four hours or during night times when the patient sleeps. So hydrogen peroxide is the main material which we use in in clinic or chair side bleaching techniques. Carbamide peroxide is usually for non-vital bleaching. It's also known as internal bleaching. Sodium perborate usually when the patient goes home carrying the bleaching material in the tray. The reaction which we call, uh, which happens over the tooth when it comes to the bleaching is redox. Redox reaction is a reduction as well as oxidation. Okay, which is getting reduced and which is getting oxidation. Let's, uh, you know, divide this into a very simpler explanation. Now, when I talk about, let's say, let's say I'm talking about hydrogen peroxide. So I take hydrogen peroxide, put it on the tooth. Now, hydrogen peroxide is the bleaching agent. And that's the oxidizing agent. Okay, so the oxidizing agent, which is your hydrogen peroxide is falling on the tooth. It is oxidizing what? It is oxidizing the tooth. The tooth becomes the reducing agent here because it's getting oxidized. What is getting oxidized? The pigments which are present in the tooth are getting oxidized. So it's a very simple oxidation reduction. Both are happening here. One is getting oxidized and one is getting reduced. Before bleaching, the tooth is the reducing agent and the bleaching agent is the oxidizing agent. It gets reversed after bleaching. The tooth is oxidized and the bleaching agent is reduced. So whenever we use something with nascent oxygen, so the main catch here in the bleaching is oxygen. The free radicals and the nascent oxygen has to be there on the tooth, which probably penetrates and then, uh, you know, oxidizes all the pigments which are present inside the tooth. And once the oxidizing is done, the, the shade of the tooth is improved. All that is removed. So this is the basic mechanism which probably we need to understand. And once we understand this mechanism, it becomes easy for us to probably proceed with the bleach bleaching procedures. So when we apply the bleaching agent, as I said, these are the free radicals, the per hydroxyl and the nascent oxygen. They oxidize the organic pigmentation and improves the shape. Please remember this as the basic thing before we proceed with the other things of bleaching techniques. What are the absolute contraindications? I've told you all the indications. When it comes to the extrinsic staining, I've told you indications. When it comes to the intrinsic staining, I've told you indications which probably need to be picked up for the tooth uh, whitening or the bleaching, basically. What are the contraindications, absolute contraindications, where we should not probably touch the tooth for bleaching? This is the first one, you know, wherever you see hypersensitivity of the tooth. So first we need to rule out the periapical status of the tooth. We need to rule out the periodontal status of the tooth. We need to rule out the occlusal status of the tooth. Please understand these things. Periapical is when you have periapical infection. You know all, I need not explain about this. Periodontal also, you know, what is occlusal? Occlusion is something which probably needs an assessment. You need to see if the opposite tooth is having any interference on the present tooth. If that tooth is causing hypersensitivity over that tooth. If that is ruled out, if the interference is taken out, the hypersensitivity comes down and then we can take the tooth for bleaching. Understand this. Otherwise, if there is no interference from the occlusion and if the tooth is hypersensitive by itself, it means that there is some kind of problem with the tooth. It could be a periapical, it could be a periodontal, which I would not probably consider the tooth as a good, uh, you know, person for bleaching. So in case you have any wear facets, in case you have any abrasions, in case you have any ab fractions, if you have any cracks, fractures, please do not take this for bleaching. It will worsen the status. It will not do any good for the patient. Extensive dental caries, yes, if patient is having dental caries, which is probably approaching the pulp and where you, you would be having pulpal hyperemia in such cases, the moment you start bleaching the tooth, the patient would be having a lot of discomfort later on. 
So all these I mentioned, recessions, whichever are probably involving the hypersensitivity status of the tooth, kindly do not take, take it for bleaching. Discolorations by metals cannot be treated with bleaching uh, to probably 90 to 95%. Uh, so you have to avoid such kind of discolorations, whether it is post or any kind of other metals that we use on the tooth. Silver amalgam restorations, discolorations, the hue that they give, the bluish uh, you know, tinge that they give cannot be treated with bleaching. So we need to be very, very confident of a selection. We need to be very, very confident of the case that needs to be selected when it comes to the bleaching. Never ever try to do bleaching on a pitted fluorosis. Wherever you have enamel that is compromised, you, you cannot go with bleaching procedures because dentin is hypersensitive. I mean, the moment you apply the bleaching agent over uh, dentin, you're actually doing more harm to the patient's tooth rather than giving a better shape. Shade is not definitely getting improved, uh, though it changes a little. Uh, to a very milder extent, but you're going to induce a lot of hypersensitivity when it comes to the patient. So when it comes to the techniques of bleaching, basically we divide the techniques according to the availability of the patient. What do I mean by availability? If the patient is next to me, I call it chair side. If the patient is not next to me, I call it home bleaching, as simple as that. So when do I select a chair side? When do I select a home bleaching? So let's think, Patient has come to me, patient is sitting on the dental chair and patient wants an improvement in the shade of the tooth. Now, how can I select this particular patient to be a chair side bleached uh, category or to be a home bleached category? The first thing what I need to understand is the patient's expectations. If the patient is expecting for a probably longer term of uh, the bleaching, post bleaching effect, to be seen on the tooth, then it is always better to probably apply home bleaching procedure to the patient because home bleaching goes for a period of time. Patient would be using the tray with the bleaching agent for probably around seven days to eight days, then re recall the patient and then assess if the shade is getting changed. So every day when the patient is using a lesser concentration of a bleaching material over a period of time, a longer period of time, the after effect also probably stays for a longer time, longer period of time. So in such cases, I would definitely select a home bleaching procedure than a chair side bleaching. If patient's expectations are okay with six months to one year, then I would probably finish the case rapidly within one session or two sessions or three sessions maximum, spacing the appointments. And then I would not be aggressive, number one, I would stage up the procedures, I would space the appointments and then probably carry on with the procedures. So the first uh, thing which I would probably know is the patient's expectation. The second thing, if the patient is sensitive, if the patient is sensitive on dental chair, I would not be aggressive with probably the chair side bleaching. I would probably give a, a, a special tray to the patient uh, and tell the patient to over own the special tray by himself or herself over a period of time and then come back to me for the result. So the categories are when it comes to the tooth vitality, we call vital tooth bleaching or non-vital tooth bleaching. If the pulp is still alive, we go with vital tooth bleaching, which is your external bleaching. We don't go into the internal parts of the tooth. When the pulp is dead, then we go internally into the tooth and then probably bleach and improve the shade of the tooth, which is known as your non-vital tooth bleach. And then, as I said, according to the availability, we either say chair side next to me in office or home bleaching, which is away from me uh, when it comes to the patient. Very important, diagnosis. How you diagnose the case? Selection of case for whitening. As I said, as simple as that, the first point what you need to understand for whitening is if the patient uh, problem is involving enamel or not. First thing, if the enamel, 60 or 70% of the enamel is not there on the tooth, if dentin is exposed, then we might have to consider any um, something else apart from bleaching. We might have to consider probably a restorative option. We cannot take the bleaching as an option. Number two, 
availability of the patient. If the patient is available to me or not. If the patient is not available to me after probably one appointment, I would not take the case for bleaching because I need to see the post-operative improvement, the post-operative assessment also when it comes to the patient. So selection of case for whitening is absolutely important. Number three, if the patient is having any generalized abrasions, if the patient is having any occlusal problems, if the patient is having any wear, if the patient is having any kind of recessions, abfractions, all these things need to be assessed before we start with the bleaching procedure. If at all patient is having all these things, we need to sort these things first, probably cover those areas which are exposed with the restoration and then improve the shade of the tooth which is coming next to the restoration. That could be done as one of the alternatives. We need to see the type of defect also, whether the defect is within the enamel or the defect is not within the enamel. Accordingly, also we need to select the bleaching. If the defect is probably spreading into the dentine, you know, let's say the defect is nearer the pulpal uh, chamber, then yes, please do not proceed with the bleaching procedure. Rather, go with a choice or an option which is known as your restoration. If the defect is localized or if the defect is generalized, what do I mean by defect? If the staining, I mean to say, if the staining is localized or generalized, then I would take a call whether I need to go with six teeth in the anteriors, six teeth in the uh, 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 lower anteriors, six teeth in the upper anteriors, or probably spread them onto the premolars as well. So smile window is also a very, very important thing when it comes to the diagnosis. Some people will have molar to molar smiles. Some people would have probably canine to canine. Some people premolars to premolars. So assess that as well in the diagnostic stage it, itself whether you can uh, improve the shade of the smile according to the smile window. And finally, expectation of the patient. If the patient is expecting the shade to increase multifold in a single appointment, kindly tell the patient that it might not be possible in all the cases. You have to be very, very real when it comes to the patient's expectations. You have to be real. You have to tell the patient that this is a staged procedure. It might happen in one appointment, it could, or it could not also, it might not also happen. So you need to probably take the expectation of the patient to a mediocre level and probably deliver something which is more than mediocre level, okay? Always promise less and then deliver more than what you've promised. That is always better. This is the informed consent which I probably follow when it comes to the cosmetic procedures or teeth whitening. The patient should know about the intraoperative and postoperative complications. Now, what is what do you mean by intraoperative complication? When I'm doing the procedure, suppose I'm not isolated well, then the bleaching agent might traumatize the soft tissues which are present around the tooth to a certain amount of time. It is not a permanent damage. So you need to probably you know, take a consent from the patient, if at all by mistake by accident, there is any kind of damage to the soft tissue, it can be recovered back. It is not a permanent damage that happens to the soft tissue. What is a post-operative complication? Sensitivity. So sensitivity might be there for a certain period of time, but it comes down definitely default. Should know the realistic expectations of the protocol. Don't tell the patient you know, I will give you a bleached teeth in the first appointment itself. No. Tell the patient that, as explained, that you have to stage up the procedure and then carry on with the bleaching. The patient should know the choice of the operator to reject the case for whitening. So if I am the operator, I have all the rights to reject the case for whitening. What are the things which we discussed? We discussed many things where I can probably reject a case and I cannot take up for tooth whitening. So it should be there in the consent that as an operator, I have all the rights to probably reject the case whenever I want. What are the steps now? Now, when it comes to, we'll discuss the vital tooth bleach bleaching, which is also known as the external tooth uh, bleaching, the chair side one. The first thing is probably you have to take a photograph just to understand the, uh, the alignment, just to understand the soft tissue topography, just to understand how many deposits are there around the teeth and just to understand the smile window as well. 
So you can either take a zoomed picture like this. You can also take a smile window picture. Tell the patient to smile wide and probably capture a picture to understand how many teeth I need to take for bleaching. Usually whenever a patient asks, we usually tell canine to canine. That's not the case. You can spread bleaching protocol to the molar as well, to the premolars as well. It depends on the patient's expectations. It depends on the smile window and how you explain to the patient. When it comes to the shade selection, definitely preoperative shade is something which you need to assess, which you need to probably note down when it comes to. This is usually done post your oral prophylaxis. Okay. So once you're done with the scaling protocol, then you have to take the shade. Vita classical is more than enough for bleaching. Okay, 3D master is something which we uh, usually prefer for restorative dentistry. So Vita classical is enough for oral prophylaxis and bleaching. Though it is not value-based system, though it is not arranged in the form of value, you can still go ahead with the shade selection with Vita classical as it just shows you the improvement. Probably from, you know, A, B, C, D, whichever, whichever uh, things go on, you can see it with Vita Classical. Patient preparation is very important before you proceed with the bleaching protocol. What is a patient preparation? I, I, uh, what, do, what do I mean by it? I don't mean by psychological preparation of the patient. Whatever is present around the mouth has to be safeguarded, as simple as that, because we are carrying something which is harsh to the tissues. So... The lips have to be soft, moist with Vaseline, any kind of KY jelly. The peri-tooth tissues, the gingival tissue, the vestibular tissue, all should be uh, nicely you know, uh, lubricated with Vaseline so that you don't have any kind of thermal injury or chemical injury inside. You can use eyewear. The patient can wear eyewear. You can also use eyewear and then the patient preparation is done. Oral prophylaxis comes first. Though I've kept the picture here, it probably comes before the shade. So finish your oral prophylaxis first and then go with the shade which you need to improve later on with bleaching protocol. When it comes to isolation, see, when it comes to restorative dentistry, I would definitely suggest uh, isolation. This is a simple split dam isolation which I usually follow when it comes to the anteriors. You can also go with the normal isolation also which can be stabilized with the floss threads. But yeah, or Teflon. You can also use this simple uh, isolation protocol, which is your split dam. This will isolate the complete area, except for the soft tissues, which is there on the labial surface. Palatally, you can add your uh, addition silicon, heavy body, and then close the gap, which is present between the dam and uh, the soft tissues. So isolation is definitely a must here because we're using something harsh. I don't want it to fall on the soft tissues. A very important picture, better be safe than to be sorry. Because uh, see, when whatever gaps that we leave here is also important. If you see here, there is a mild gap that has been left. And then that's been covered later on. So the beauty of taking a picture is immediately assessing what you're doing as well. It is the, the beauty of documentation is you can see minor, minor things also what happens and then cover it up. This is a complete isolation protocol which we follow. Here we used Philips Dash uh, as uh, the bleaching uh, material. So they provide everything in the kit. They provide everything in the kit. So you need to isolate it very well so that you know nothing falls anywhere. I would still isolate with the dam, probably keep all these things and then proceed with the bleaching procedure. So this is very important. Now, once the isolation is done, we need to protect the soft tissue now. The best material is your gingival barrier. So you can just flow the gingival barrier and cure it uh, with light cure. It becomes quite hard and now everything is sealed. If you see here, palatally it is sealed by addition silicon, heavy body. And then labially, it is sealed with the gingival barrier. So now I'm safe to carry on the procedure. Whatever bleaching uh, agent, wherever it falls, I'm still safe. It is not falling anywhere on the soft tissues around the teeth. Now you mix the bleaching agent. You get a bleaching agent in the form of powder and liquid. The powder is uh, consists of usually an abrasive material. And then the liquid is hydrogen peroxide. 
the concentration varies from the lower concentration to the higher concentration. Usually, it falls between 30 and 40 when it comes to the H2O2. So you can mix both the powder and the liquid together and then apply over the teeth in increments. So once you scrub over the teeth and leave it for five, probably five to six minutes, there you get this oxidation and the reduction, red oxidations that happens over the tooth and the shade slowly improves. It might not happen in one appointment. It might happen uh, in, in probably two to three appointments or in a single appointment with various installments of applications of the bleaching agent. So five minutes, wash, clean everything, and then again, after one minute, give a break of one minute and then reapply the bleaching agent. Uh, don't be very aggressive. We don't want the patients to be sensitive or hypersensitive later on. Space it up. No issues. Usually we apply, after bleaching, we apply either the fluoride gel, the, the fluoride, which is your sodium fluoride, or you can also use these pastes which we get uh, in the market. So once you see the final shade and if the patient's expectations are reached and your expectations are reached, then you can remove the dam. So this is your vital bleaching. So when I talk about vital bleaching, we are actually improving the shade of the tooth from one shade to another shade by applying the material, which is usually your hydrogen peroxide. Now, the catalyst which is there in the liquid, so this is without any kind of external source. This is just a chemical reaction that is happening, what I'm explaining. You can also induce any external source, activate the catalyst, and probably the reaction becomes multifold. The reaction becomes very fast. And the result is also absolutely great. So you have procedures where you apply external sources along with the chemical reaction to make sure that the procedure is enhanced with time. We'll see what are this. So this is a non-vital bleaching where the tooth is become dark. And uh, once the root canal treatment is done, if you see this chart, you'll understand. Once the root canal treatment is done three-dimensionally, we remove the gutta parka probably two to three millimeters below the junction, create a barrier with glass enamel cement, which is your uh, strong barrier in between the filling, the obturator, obturation material and the, the access chamber. Once this barrier is there, I can induce any chemical here into the access cavity. So this barrier is very, very important. So you can either use zinc phosphate, you can either use cavit, you can either use glass enamel, but I would prefer a stronger barrier. So I would use a glass enamel barrier here. So either MTA or gutta parka in the canal. After that, a barrier in the form of glass enamel, and then a clean access cavity, which can be filled with the, the bleaching material, probably two to three millimeters superiorly, and then a cavit or a temporary material. Usually we see a difference overnight itself. The shade comes to a, a better version overnight or probably one day. Now, what do we induce here? We mix sodium. Uh, as, as I said, when it comes to the classifications, we had hydrogen peroxide, different types of uh, uh, bleaching agents. So we mix the material of the uh, bleaching agent into the access cavity with water. Okay, so when it comes to the non-vital bleaching, once the root canal filling is done, we open up the access cavity, remove the gutta parka, probably two millimeters below this junction, and then seal it with the glyzonomer, and then probably a material which goes into the bleaching, which material we'll discuss. We'll see the flowcharts later on. Now, when it comes to the home bleaching, the patient goes back from the dental clinic. We are not taking the uh, case in the dental clinic per se. Uh, you have different materials for it. Some few people uh, use hydrogen peroxide as again. Few people uh, use a combination of uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, in different concentrations. So this is one of the best um, uh, systems which I have used personally. Opalescence tooth whitening system, which is used for home bleaching. So they give a carrier as well. They give a paste, which can be applied 
uh, daily when you're using the bleaching. The only thing which we need to do is probably make a special tray out of thermoplastic resin sheet. And then we can give the patient these number of syringes. Patient can apply the material in the syringe and then wear. How many hours? Probably three to four hours in a day or overnight. When is the recall? After one week. Precautions. Tell the patient to be very, very cautious about the application of the material. It should not be filled completely. It should be applied only on the labial or the buccal surface and then gently applied over the teeth because I don't want the material to go onto the soft tissue, injure the soft tissue. There could be a thermal or chemical injury. Now, as I said, there could be a combination as well. When I'm using a chair side bleaching, I could have a light which probably falls on uh, the bleaching material and then activate the catalyst as well. The only disadvantage with this is it overheats the tooth. It overheats the tooth and there could be hypersensitivity. It takes a lot of time. It dehydrates the tooth as well. So usually uh, the normal lights, which are probably the thermal carriers, which probably uh, give a lot of heat, are replaced now with power bleaching. So you either use ultrasonic uh, carriers here, you either use your normal curing lights, uh, plasma lights, you can use your halogen bulbs, you can use your uh, diode bulbs, whatever. You can use all those things and then induce light, which probably activates the catalyst inside the bleaching agent. And then, so the best power bleaching, which probably we have now in the market is the Philips Zoom, which uh, probably takes very, very less uh, amount of time per tooth and then activates the catalyst and gives a very, very good result. The disadvantage of this is it's quite costlier to invest. But yes, whoever can invest can get this uh, into the practice. Laser bleaching, yes, we can go ahead with laser bleaching, the three types of lasers that are carbon dioxide or you know argon or diode lasers. Uh, they have different, different uh, frequencies, different lights are used. This is the typical blue light which is used by uh, argon laser when it comes to carbon dioxide you get infrared uh, lights with the carbon dioxide but everything has its specific uh, usage uh, laser laser bleaching is also very good no thermal no heat exposure no dehydration of tooth no pulpal hypersensitivity quite good for activating the catalyst and giving the absolute results when it comes to the fluorosis how can we treat now, fluorosis is something which is there inside uh, the enamel. So if it's not pitted, yes, we can attempt to remove the fluorite stains uh, by a solution which is known as McKean solution. Now, though this has to be prepared, that if it is not available readily, it has to be prepared. We can take five parts of 30% hydrogen peroxide, which is the main ingredient. We can also take five parts of 36% hydrogen chloride, which is an acid which combines with the hydrogen peroxide and one part of either or alcohol. You know, all these have to be mixed and scrubbed over the tooth. This acts as probably an enamel dissolvent. It removes certain part of uh, enamel, probably around microns, you know, 0.2 to 0.3 microns, and then uh, goes into the stains, the pigments, oxidizes them, removes them as a layer. You also have a good solution, which is known as anti-wet now from Ident. Uh, this also uh, can be used for mild cases of fluorosis. I would not suggest this for probably moderate or uh, questionable fluorosis, very mild. Yes, it can be used too. So it has one liquid, which is used to clean. It's, a, it's called cleansing liquid, clean the enamel, and one liquid, which is neutralizing liquid which can be used after cleansing the enamel so isolation again is a must so once we apply either mckean's or anti-wet solution here it cleans the enamel rubs the enamel probably goes inside removes the stains oxidizes everything and then gets it out so this is used to uh, with uh, the this is used with mckean's and this is used with the ident anti-wet and there was a decent outcome which uh, we achieved with anti wet as well. The lot of uh, you know strips, paste, trays that are available in the market over the counters also when it comes to the either the medical shops or your Amazons or uh, etc. etc. 
so these are uh, just a temporary solutions uh, which should not be used by the patients until and unless a dentist would suggest which will not happen so these strips are just polyethylene strips which can be peeled off and then kept on the teeth for teeth whitening uh, should be uh, carefully used because we don't know what formulations would be there in the uh, making of these strips your number of pastes as well these are maintaining pastes i mean i cannot use this paste to probably get the result of bleaching after bleaching probably i can use this paste these pastes you have snow dent your white spark the lot number of uh, paste that are available commercially you can give the patient to use these things uh, along with the paste that are used for sensitivity you have trays that are available commercially as well I mean patient can buy the tray and then probably use it from uh, amazon or google but you know when the dentist can prescribe something like that give something like that why not there is one more procedure which is not you know probably in between the um bleaching and restoration after bleaching we directly go ahead with the restoration we can also try something called microabrasion so microabrasion is you know we either take applicator tapes we either take pumice uh, you know puffs we either take uh, the finishing strips uh, the composite discs whatever and then after isolation we use hydrochloric acid and then we scrub over the tooth for around 5 to 6 minutes that will dissolve the enamel that will remove a layer of enamel and then give you a certain kind of result microabrasion is also done with burrs microabrasion is also done with burrs but i would not take up uh, a case with burrs rather try with probably 18% hydrochloric acid hcl not are the common products that are available for chair side bleaching after we know the protocol after we know what we have to use after we know how we have to use and uh, you know what is the time of usage we also need to know which is the which is a better brand which we can buy the number of companies the number of companies but uh, you know philips dash is something which stands out uh, though there is some kind of clash with the production rate as of now in the market but this definitely stands out when it comes to the chair side bleaching it consists of 30% hydro hydrogen peroxide uh, this can be used on the teeth chair side polar office consists of 35% of uh, hydrogen peroxide it's a one patient kit so what you get is you know a powder and the liquid that has to be mixed together and you know used for the patient in one single appointment so you can charge the patient accordingly probably in indian market when it comes to the dentistry three times the the uh, material uh, charges you can charge and then minimum and then you can proceed Florence is also good. It's also a a, a good uh, in-office whitening system, which consists of thirty-five percent again hydrogen uh, peroxide. Uh, it is also one patient kit, which you can use it on uh, the patient. For someone who is looking out for probably a mediocre investment and then uh, do a certain kind of mild bleaching procedure, twenty-four karat is also good. This is definitely one of the best products, Opalescent's Boost, which has. two syringes as you see in the picture they can be mixed together made a single liquid and then but this has 40% hydrogen peroxide it has to be used very 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 carefully the isolation has to be bang on uh, the protocol has to be bang on when it comes to the opalescence boost so what are the takeaways from all these procedures which we have seen the first takeaway is selection of case is important whether you space the case select the case and place it either in scaling finish it or carry on to the bleaching or carry on to microabrasion or carry on to the restorative dentistry that is very important or a combination of these things sometimes never be aggressive with bleaching don't tell the patient that it is done in one single appointment you will get the required or desired shade in one single appointment no always tell the patient it might take few appointments if i deliver the result in single appointment well and good you pay me and leave otherwise it has to be spaced up teeth whitening is the starting point of cosmetic cosmetic procedures so the oral prophylaxis is a general procedure but when it comes to cosmetic dentistry definitely teeth whitening is something which we need to start with 
before we proceed on to the restorations. Restorative dentistry indications are quite different when it comes to the cosmetic teeth whitening indications. Okay, this, this is just real, uh, I mean, uh, confined to the shade. When it comes to restoration, it is confined to both shade, size, shape. Understand this difference. Saturation point is there for this material. What is saturation point? Uh, let's say I have used this material for 10 minutes or 11 minutes on the tooth. Now that becomes oversaturation. There is a saturation point of the material which stops by probably 5 to 6 minutes. Use it in that period of time only. Don't overdo it when it comes to the uh, material. In-office bleaching is always better than home bleaching if the patient's expectations are bang on. If the patient's expectations are too much, if the patient wants probably uh, a long-lasting effect of bleaching, you can try with home bleaching if the patient can carry it over and then probably take it. Power bleaching, which I ex explained, which I discussed, which is not heat bleaching, which is light bleaching. I mean, we either use uh, the lasers, we either use these light sources, which are not emitting a lot of heat onto the tooth, are the best sources. Philips Zoom is one of the best examples for it. So broadly classifying now, it is in office, on tooth, home, on tooth, vital teeth bleaching, non-vital teeth bleaching. And the various materials that we used, I have explained which case, which material has to be used. So I hope this uh, brief lecture was quite informative and uh, you get some takeaway points and then start using uh, the, the materials according to your requirements by good isolation protocols and then deliver the required smile to the patients. Myself, Dr. Sarvi Mahidhar, again, signing out and I wish all, all the best to everyone who is there present. Uh, I hope this was quite informative and beneficial. If anyone wants to probably, uh, you know, get some kind of clarifications about uh, anything in the subjects, you are quite welcome. I've given my Facebook ID, Instagram ID, Gmail ID, and clinical Facebook page where I keep posting all my different kinds of cases. Thank you once again, and thank you to everyone, whoever is present here. Thank you, Dr. Mahindra. It was a very nice lecture. You covered the entire spectrum of uh, tooth whitening and uh, right from prophylaxis till the vital, non-vital, everything you covered. And it was quite informative. And uh, we are getting comments that say that it was a good lecture, quite informative, and they have got immense benefit from the lecture. And uh, before we take on some of the live questions, I would like to start with uh, the questions that were sent by people when they signed up uh, through the Google form. Uh, there are quite good number of uh, questions here. What are the chances of recurrence in tooth whitening? So the, the chances of recurrence are quite uh, quite good when it comes to the bleaching because a uh, patient uh, definitely ends up in taking solid and liquid again. So there could be definitely staining of the tooth. There could be definitely change. Uh, but we start with oral prophylaxis again. See if it is external staining or there is a shade uh, reversal phenomenon which we call which has happened to the tooth. And then we take a call of probably bleaching for the second time again. This is usually done in six to eight month period of time. Okay. Now the next question, it's a long question. Is tooth whitening procedure done after scaling and how much lighter shades should we expect? Moreover, is this tooth whitening a permanent solution for patients with darker shades? And how long the new shade will last for? How much guarantee we can give to a patient? So I think somebody who has gone through a lot of yeah. similar situations in clinic. <laughs> uh, definitely no guarantee. Definitely no guarantee because we, we the whatever happens in mouth is very dynamic. It is not static. So whatever happens is again a recall period of six to eight months. And the shade difference is quite a two-step procedure, two-fold procedure, what we call so we cannot get an uh, probably an abrupt change in the shade from the shade which is present in the patient's mouth. It is usually changed by two folds. Then we take a call whether we need to increase the shade again, uh, make it more lighter. 
uh, give value the importance it has to be given okay next question how to reduce post operative sensitivity and also is it advised in patient with abrasion for tooth whitening i think you covered abrasion mm -hmm. yes sir any occlusal problems which are present in the tooth let, let it be a tooth wear occlusion wear facets recessions or fractions whatever it is there no a big no no until we probably restore that or treat it with perio uh, whatever is the situation after that probably we can think of bleaching the subsequent portion of the tooth the next portion of the tooth which is there uh, apart from the restoration otherwise okay. recession is definitely not an option for uh, bleaching especially so what is the other that other uh, question which is there uh, two or i think how to reduce post post operative sensitivity uh, see the post operative sensitivity can be handled right from the stage of bleaching procedure itself intraoperative post operative both thing so if we are not very aggressive with the application of the bleaching agent if you are doing it layer by layer the post operative sensitivity starts reducing by then then and there itself and after that probably after we finish the bleaching we have to probably tell the patient to use fluoride applications or uh, potassium nitrate whichever the the toothpaste for sensitivity can be given to the patient uh, i have read in many of the studies that if you start with potassium nitrate and sodium monofluorophosphate combination toothpaste two weeks before the uh, bleaching appointment and after every appointment if you keep it applied on the tooth surface for 10 minutes and asking the patient to continue with the same uh, toothpaste for another 2 3 weeks it provides much better uh, yes sir uh, you know? yes sir but uh, usually when we have repeat patients probably the patient mm -hmm. has come for certain kind of problem and then we space up the appointment of patient in such a way that the patient probably comes after 10 days we can prescribe that and then tell the patient come back but if okay. the patient is coming for the first time and expects the bleaching to be done on chair in the same appointment then starting from the procedure itself we need to be careful okay or space up again and as you said yes that is one of the better approaches okay okay so the one question you can expect in every lecture which is the best whitening kit or <laughs> if you can recommend some kit so anything which has probably 30 to 40% of hydrogen peroxide is good okay if, if if probably you want to go with the branded one yes philips zoom or opalescence boost is one of the definitely most preferred uh, kits we use in uh, cosmetic dentistry for bleaching procedures but yes what whatever is the basic point is you should have good amount of 30 to 40% of hydrogen peroxide and you need to be uh, doing good kind of isolation and follow the protocol okay okay great how to decide the amount to charge to the patient depending on the bleaching agent we are using and the number of appointments how what is the into equation? three into three into 3 is the basic protocol that we follow in indian uh, okay. market Uh, when it comes to us and uh, australia it is into 8 but we still have this into 3 into 4 in the market okay okay uh best method for tooth whitening and best material of choice best method is uh, you know combination of chemical as well as uh, light it's called power bleaching uh when i say light it is not thermo it is probably a light which is coming from the other sources like lasers uh like plasma lights or the diodes which we use in other philips zoom for example okay. don't use the normal lights which carry uh, a lot of heat that would damage the tooth okay uh there is a question on ai and di can we do bleaching in all types of discoloration can we do bleaching in amelogenesis imperfecta and dentinogenesis imperfecta no basically no because uh, usually they fall into the category of restoration because we need to restore the defect as well as well as change the shape so shape shade size all these things matter in ai and di and di no chance because dentin uh, dentin is exposed dentin is definitely subjected to the bleaching agent so no okay how to match shade in case prosthetic crown is there adjacent to the tooth to be bleached it's a great question suppose the prosthetic crown is already uh, having a natural shape let's say that the next tooth is uh, having a fluorosis stain and if the uh, concerned dentist if the dentist has given the crown according to that stain 
flourish stain which is characterized crown then it is extremely difficult for us to you know change the shade of the present tooth according to that again because it's already characterized according to the fluorescent stain so in such cases what we do in case the patient is having an expectation of getting the fluorescent stain treated in the future we give the crown with a natural value we don't actually characterize the crown we give a natural shade to the crown leave it and then when the patient comes back we treat the fluorescent stain according to the shade of the tooth okay okay so that is Great. a better approach if patient has expectations if patient has no expectations yes we characterize according to the fluorus stain and give it okay what is your experience with internal bleaching in patients who do not opt for crowns definitely good definitely good we can maintain the access cavity very conservative we can finish the root canal treatment as i said we can place a liner and then give a, 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 a bleaching agent inside usually they also use sodium perborate in sometimes or a combination of hydro uh, hydrogen peroxide and sodium perborate in many cases that will give you uh, after effect in a 24 hour period of time even if we are probably planning to place a crown internal bleaching is definitely a better option before we place a crown because whatever dark stump we have when we place probably a metal free ceramic crown or a zirconia whichever the shade is definitely matched better with okay. internal bleaching what is the best tip you can give for shade selection uh, the best uh, tip i give for say shade selection is when you are using oral prophylaxis and bleaching as a protocol use vita classical when you are using a restorative dentistry use your 3d shade guide do not depend on vita classical and always always depend on the value don't depend on the hue and chroma as such so it always goes with value and then goes ahead okay okay aspects to be considered in tooth whitening in patients with sensitivity i think you have covered it fluoridated toothpaste potassium nitrate and then yes, don't have to go aggressively go step wise yes. okay uh up to what time does the effect of tooth whitening last and what factors determine uh, the extent of this period or the period for it which depends it on the patient's aggression also sometimes patients oh. uh, take a lot of uh, colored food substances so the first thing what we say the patient is please avoid but how much they can avoid that is also a question mark that that we cannot uh, probably pressurize the patient on how much they can avoid so usually what we do is keep a protocol of uh, revision of 6 months once the patient comes back after 6 months we decide whether we need to probably go with one more tooth uh, uh, whitening procedure or leave it for another 6 months and take a recall again it is not a permanent procedure for sure we need to keep on doing it okay does light cure do light cure bleaching agents have any genuine advantage in the outcome right. over the only the advantage is the light activity. activates the catalyst the the only yeah. advantage the light activates the catalyst so basically you have chemical the light acts as probably an activator of the catalyst and enhances the procedure or the redox reaction which is happening on the tooth so definitely a combination of chemical and light is uh, uh, power yes. bleaching okay okay uh looking at technique sensitivity which is the less technique sensitive uh, material that we can use i am currently using sdi polar office plus great polar office has 35% of hydrogen peroxide so i'm sure uh, you, you are uh, using the right material and it's a one patient uh, material kit also so you can just use it you know throw it away charge the patient accordingly and get the kit again great okay, okay. then which is better among in office thermocatalytic versus in office power bleaching definitely in office power bleaching because thermocatalytic will give you a lot of heat it dehydrates the tooth to uh, a very great extent it also causes pulp and necrosis to certain extent if you are not controlling the heat usually we should keep at least 30 cm away from the face and then subject the light onto the tooth if that is not happening definitely it is dangerous so power bleaching is definitely 100% better than thermocatalytic okay your experience with laser tooth whitening 
Absolutely great. Laser will not give you any heat. Number one, laser enhances the uh, procedure, and time required is very very less. It is almost in seconds per tooth. So laser bleaching. If you definitely have lasers, I would definitely suggest go with laser uh, whitening. Okay. It also is one of the modes of power bleaching, chemical and laser light. Okay. You are experienced with zoom bleaching, and uh, do you prescribe tooth whitening toothpastes? Probably after. I mean, probably if the patient is uh, coming for a recall visit, after we finish the bleaching procedure in office clinic, uh, in the clinic chair side, then yes. But as such, the tooth whitening paste will not have any value when it comes okay. to the other procedures. Uh, zoom. Uh, I definitely, I have used it as probably uh, one to two cases outside. I'm not uh, invested still in the clinic. Whatever I've used in one to two cases, it was definitely fantastic. The time period of bleaching was very, very less. Comfort level of the patient was great. Okay. Okay. How do you know, how do you measure or assess the depth of fluorosis? It all depends on the pitting, basically pitting. So you have grades of fluorosis, definitely. You have minimal, you have moderate. You have uh, questionable and you have pitted four kinds of fluorosis. So if you probably have no pitting on the enamel, definitely it can be treated with McKean solution. Or if uh, you have good amount of enamel, either direct or indirect restrictions, partial bonded restrictions can be used. If not, then we take a call of full coverage if it is pitted. Okay. Uh any thoughts on tooth whitening varnishes? They they just act as, uh, you know, the, the same thing. What I was uh, talking about, uh, scrubbing the material. The varnishes are something which are available in the market. So people take it and then they apply. You have also pens, the whitening pens which are available. The pens can be taken and you can scrub over the teeth. But all yeah. these things have to be taken as an... Uh, as a suggestion from the dentist and then probably we need to use it but they don't have a real advantage for sure okay okay mm, i think uh, we have covered almost all the questions which were sent on the google form google. Uh, and uh, i think i missed something here what happens if we continue to bleach if the bleaching time goes beyond the Recommended normal bleaching time. I think this is mm, what he wants. That's the saturation point. That's the saturation yeah. point I was explaining. So okay. uh, maintain the saturation point uh, and then, you know, do not exceed the saturation point because the reaction is already done. Okay. So you don't have basically any other side effect or adverse effect. Whatever happens is happening within the five minutes. Uh, that reduces the time of operator as well as the patient. Okay. Now I'm taking some of the questions that have come live. Any yes, impact of bleaching on PFM crown and bridge? Not really, not really. Uh, it will not uh, actually bleach the ceramic material which is present on the restoration. Definitely, this is acting on the enamel, basically. It's not acting on the substitute of the enamel. Okay, okay. Got Probably it. if you're using a combination with hydrochloric acid, yes, but not with hydrogen peroxide. Okay. In case of very mild fluorosis staining, can antivet be useful and how long does its results last? It is definitely use, useful in mild fluorosis, definitely. The, the cleansing solution which uh, we apply with the applicator has to be scrubbed for a longer period of time. So you need to have a little patience with antivet. Uh, you don't get it in one application. You need to keep on scrubbing it on the enamel till the enamel becomes soft. And the pigmentation which is there, you know, it cleans away everything. Okay. And then it takes around 10 to 15 minutes at least to get one idea what we are going to do on the tooth. So till then, you are actually clueless what you're doing. It will not give you any result. But if you're patient enough for 10 to 15 minutes, it starts giving the result then and there itself. Okay. There are many questions which ask if this whitening is permanent and if there are uh, recurrent chances. Of, I think you have all answered and there is a, no, one person among the audience only who has given a philosophical answer. Nothing is guaranteed in this world. Everything is <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. If the expected shade is not achieved in one application, 
how long should we wait for the second application usually we space it up with 1 to 2 minutes two applications can be spaced up with an interval of 1 to 2 minutes and then applied uh probably if you're spacing up the appointments give 48 hours as a okay. interval and then you can apply okay does gc tooth mousse help in post op sensitivity it it does it does definitely it does uh, to a certain extent uh, it's a good material it's a good material for post operative application okay. apart from the the caries the anti caries effect it has is there a rule how many days after we do composite restoration we go for bleaching anything uh there is a rule otherwise you know after bleaching how many days probably we have to wait for the composite, composite. restoration because after composite restoration we will not bleach the restoration is done we have uh, probably improved the shade the size shape everything so we don't go for an external bleaching after restoration but the okay. other way after bleaching 20 uh, 48 hours to 72 hours is the recommended protocol time you need to wait okay. you said isolation is very critical so someone wants to know other than rubber dam what are the other isolation techniques you can use opera dam uh, definitely you can use opera dam you can use a okay. lot of cotton rolls stuff the mouth with cotton rolls completely as i've shown in one of the pictures uh, uh, then you yeah, make sure that this soft tissue is not damaged okay in fact that was the picture that was in my mind you had posted it, it on facebook 2 years ago absolutely yes sir 2 3 years ago i recollected that <laughs> yes yes Okay. Uh, what is the minimum age to attempt bleaching? See, any uh, when it comes to the any uh, restorative protocol, when it when it comes to the bleaching protocol, the standard eighteen to twenty one twenty one years of age has to be definitely respected. We cannot do bleaching below that. Okay. The okay. number one pulp is hyperemic. The the pulp chamber is very very close to uh, the enamel. It is full of blood vessels at that time. so let it be in between 18 to 21 and then take a call after that great great what is the best material to be used with diode lasers with the diode lasers definitely any any material which is 30 to 40% of hydrogen peroxide okay okay any I kind of I, hydrogen peroxide yeah two two last questions how to overcome roughness of enamel after bleaching you you won't get roughness of enamel after bleaching uh, only see when you're doing micro abrasion probably with a burr or with some kind of abrasive then you get a uh, rough texture but after bleaching you won't get any rough texture only the shade changes uh, it, it infuses into the tooth uh, oxidizes the pigments and then changes changes the shade so it is not actually damaging the enamel here if you're using an acid let's say it's an mckean solution if you are using an acid let's say if it is a micro abrasion along with the silica particles then yes you can probably polish it with pumis or you can also polish it with the diamond paste which we use usually after composites to get the luster that can be used as a polishing mechanism but after bleaching you need not do it for sure okay okay if soft tissue damage happens how to manage it just uh, leave i reassure the patient uh you know give any anti inflammatory topical solutions to the patient patient will be all right within 48 hours great great i think uh, as you were answering there was another question if gingiva gets irritated with the bleaching agent what to do i think you have answered it perfectly well yes. can scaling and bleaching be done in the same appointment no space it up better space it up uh, let the scaling be done uh, you know space it up and then get the real shade and then go ahead with the bleaching wonderful i think we have finished all the questions those that were sent on the google form by people who had registered before and those who have directly come for the live lecture and that was a wonderful session dr survi mahidar we completed you, everything in 1 hour 20 minutes and uh, now i welcome the idea officials uh, dr amit unni the president idea malapuram dr rakesh gangadharan the secretary idea malapuram and uh, dr nishad pari cd convener for the last st st stage of the last step of the session can we have dr rakesh dr amit and dr nishad on screen so by the way i am in love with the background huh? you have <laughs> <laughs> thank you
yes dr rajesh over to you nishad pari for vote of thanks okay hello everyone it gives me immense pleasure to deliver vote of thanks for this wonderful webinar hosted by idea malappuram and powered by icpa health products limited firstly i would like to thank our speaker dr surabhi mahidar who honored this webinar with his inspirational thoughts and wonderful class thank you dr surabhi mahidar then i would like to thank our powered partner icpa health product limited for their support i would like to request all the participants support them back with their product legs ra thermoseal toothpastes dental floss ra thermoseal etc etc i would like to thank all our participants from idea malappuram branch and other idea branches uh, all over india from abroad also for making this webinar as a grand success i would like to thank our moderator of the webinar dr rajiv for his coordination and help i would like to thank idea malappuram branch president dr amit unni secretary dr rajesh gangadharan and all other executive members of idea malappuram branch for their hard work and support once again thank you all and very good night we hope to see you again thank you good night good night